Hello world, Curtis here. And if you haven't heard, all the rage right now on YouTube is sharing your Blu-ray collection. Blu-ray slash DVD collection. So that's what I'm here to do today. I feel like this is probably going to be a few parts. Um, today I've got out my kind of standard Blu-rays. Uh, I think I'll do special editions um, or special, you know, Blu-rays in a different video. Maybe do DVDs in another video. I don't know, figure it out. I feel like this is gonna be enough for one video, so let's get to it. Showing off all my Blu-rays. You know, and actually, before I get started, this is a good time to show my Blu-rays because I have been a huge film uh, collector for many years, and, and over the years, my, you know, the size of my collection has grown and shrunk and grown and shrunk. Um, I think at, at its height during the heyday of DVDs, I think I had like 2,000 at one point, like two bookshelves completely full. Uh, but I think I, I realized it got to a point where it, it was becoming quantity over quality. And when I really decided to commit to Blu-ray, I wanted to get rid of all my DVDs, which some I regret getting rid of because some of them are kind of harder to find, but whatever, it's done, can't take that back. Uh, but I decided with the Blu-rays, I really want to try or attempt to only get the stuff that's super important to me, that I, that I and has a rewatch uh, factor to it. You know, like I, I, I don't wanna just fill up my collection with stuff for the sake of filling it up. Uh, yeah, so with that being said, let's get into it. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, starting off, what better way to start off? 2001, A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick. My two favorite directors of all time are Billy Wilder and Stanley Kubrick. I don't know if I, if I can really decide who's my favorite between the two, um, but they are definitely my favorite. Uh, this is maybe Kubrick's best film. It's not my favorite but it's certainly an achievement in uh, design, in, you know, he, he got a special Oscar. The only Oscar Kubrick ever won, ever won was for this movie they made. Uh, it's a special effects Oscar for him um, because of this. And I mean, you can see the influence in films like Star Wars and Star Trek and uh, j just with the practical effects um, in this. Uh, and this has a great, uh, s some great special features on it if you're into that, I am absolutely into that. Uh, commentary. Um, I love commentaries. Yeah, check it out. 2001. I don't want to waste too much time on each film, so I'll try and go through them as quickly as I can. Uh, An American Werewolf in London. This is my favorite horror film of all time. Uh, some of the best practical effects. Uh, the werewolf transformation. Um, again, a lot of great special features on this if you're into behind the scenes stuff. Barry Lyndon. Another Stanley Kubrick, wow, I can't talk today. Stanley Kubrick film. This might be my favorite Kubrick film. No, it's, it might be up in my top three though. This is super underrated. Nobody ever talks about this. Ryan O'Neill kills it. Oh, he's so good. Um, yeah, love this, love this film. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, this is my favorite. Before Disney Plus made all this stuff readily available. Uh, you had to wait for stuff to come out of the vault with Disney. This is my favorite Disney film. This is my favorite animated film of all time. Uh, watched it, had it when I was a kid. You know, hit me at that, that right moment when I was a kid and uh, has never let go. Um, but this is the, what is this, the Diamond Edition? A lot of special features, great stuff. Howard Ashman, one of the greatest uh, musical geniuses. Him and Alan Menken did the music for that. They, uh, so good. Man, we lost Howard Ashman way too early. Bums me out. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, maybe my second favorite Tim Burton one. I actually don't think I have my favorite Tim Burton, which is Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I love that movie, uh, but Beetlejuice, great film. Can't go wrong with that, Michael Keaton kills it. Uh, this is an interesting one you probably haven't heard of. Uh, this is called Beyond the Gates. You can see Barbara Crampton there. Uh, this was actually my, my buddy, Jackson Stewart, wrote and directed this. I went to a special, uh, uh, signing, got the whole cast and everybody to sign it. Um, but yeah, my buddy Jackson uh, made this. Uh, very fun, check it out. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, like Jumanji meets horror movies. 
it's fun. It's 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 a uh, it's a love letter to those old um, VHS board games from the '90s. Very fun. Big Trouble in Little China. What is this? Uh, yeah, this is just I'm not a big fan of this uh, cover art. Love this. Love this. Uh, mm, this. And the thing are vied for my favorite John Carpenter film. I just love Kurt Russell on this. I don't think he's ever played a role cooler than Jack Burton, even though Jack Burton's kind of an idiot. I love him in this. He's, he's so good. That's the movie that made me fall in love with Kurt Russell. Love this one. This is a, actually a pal, pal uh, version of the film. It's The Blob from 1988, written by Frank Darabont, right? Yes. Uh, remake of the 1950s one with Steve McQueen. I love this. This is one of my favorite horror movies. I used to rent this all the time when I was a kid. And it was getting hard to find on Blu-ray. And so I ended up getting the PAL version because I have a region-free uh, Blu-ray player. Uh, and then, like, what was it, Scream Factory or someone put out a special edition, which is probably why I couldn't find it on Blu-ray. Um, nonetheless, great film. Uh, yeah. Cabin in the Woods. Can't go wrong with Cabin in the Woods. Deconstruction of horror films. Uh, Drew Goddard directed it, uh, written by Drew Goddard and Joss Whedon. Loved it. This was this was a movie that, when I saw it in the theater, uh, was such a great experience. I, I'm a huge proponent of going out to cinema. It's killing me right now that COVID's basically stopped all that, and I'm really worried for the future of cinema uh, as far as going out to movie theaters um, because just nothing, there is nothing that compares to the magic of sitting in a room with like 200 strangers and you're all experiencing the same emotions, the same highs, the same lows. There's just a, a magic that cannot be reproduced in your living room. Um, but yeah, that was a great experience I had in the theater. Lots of twists and turns and surprises. Uh, fun film. The Cable Guy. Cable Guy. Jim Carrey's best film of the 1990s. I said it. Beats out Ace Ventura, beats out Dumb and Dumber, beats out The Mask, Truman Show, Liar Liar, all those. It's this one. It, it just is. It's, it's a very dark black comedy, uh, if you've never seen it. Um, this one actually, what I love about this Blu-ray is it has a phenomenal commentary track uh, with Ben Stiller, who directed the film, Jim Carrey, and Judd Apatow, who produced it. Uh, really great. But yeah, hot take. This is the best Jim Carrey film of the 90s. Fight me. Casino Royale. I love James Bond. Gotta get more James Bond films. Um, but this was the first Daniel Craig one. I remember seeing this in theaters. This totally revitalized the uh, franchise after Die Another Day. And I still think it's probably the best of the Daniel Craig ones. Um, very good. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. This is actually Layla's, my girlfriend's, uh, but very good. And I would happily Keep it in the collection. I love these old, uh, what is this, MGM? Yeah, these old like 60s movies. This has shades of Mary Poppins. You know, obviously Dick Van Dyke's in it as well. Uh, very fun, very imaginative, uh, and very long, if I'm not, yeah, an hour and 40, no, 145 minutes. Good Lord, what is that, two and a half hours? Great film, though, great film. Um, I put this, I'm obviously going in alphabetical order. This is under C's for Cullen. Uh, because I don't know how else to alphabetize it, but it's the Coen Brothers collection, which has Blood Simple, actually that's just showing, Blood Simple, uh, Raising Arizona, Miller's Crossing, and Fargo. Fargo is one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm a big fan of reading screenplays as well. If you've never read the screenplay for Fargo, it is perfect. Uh, it is. It, it shows you how to say more with less. It's a very short screenplay. It's like 94 pages, and it is uh, very sparse with description and dialogue, but it gives you everything you need. So any aspiring writers out there, I would point you towards the Fargo screenplay um, for how to maximize uh, the use of words on a page. Plus, it's one of my favorite films. Miller's Crossing, okay, a little convoluted. Raising Arizona, classic, love it. The score for this, brilliant. Nicolas Cage, one of his great performances. And Blood Simple, their first film, they came out of the gate swinging. Uh, really fun, love the ending of this film. If you've never seen it, really cool. Here's a rare one, turns out. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, the George Romero one. This is like a $100 Blu-ray. 
<laughs> Who knew? I bought it for like eight bucks back when it was brand new. Um, yeah, I bought this when I worked at Hollywood Video. Uh, really fun. I, pr probably one of the best zombie movies ever. Um, certainly my favorite. It's my favorite of the trilogy, the uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead of the original George Romero ones. Very good, though. The Departed. I love this film. Scorsese uh, finally got his Oscar for this one. Not as good as Goodfellas. But it is better than Casino. And I don't care what anybody says about Jack Nicholson's performance, him, him hamming it up. I love it. I love everything about this film. Uh, the editing is primo. Um, the pacing. Man, this movie moves. If you don't remember, if you haven't seen it in a while, this movie just flies. Really good. Love it. District 9. Boy, I had such high hopes for Neil Blomkamp when, uh, when this came out. Really uh, a brilliant film. Underrated. I don't know. Maybe it's not underrated. I think everybody liked it. But um, very good. Uh, his subsequent films have not lived up to this. Um, but really good. I love how this is kind of a mockumentary, and then it just devolves or evolves into a regular film by the end. Really strange decision to do that, but it somehow works. Very odd. Django Unchained. I love Quentin Tarantino. I love him. I mean, he's kind of a bit controversial, but I think he's one of the best writers out there. Um, he goes for broke. He's ballsy and he writes what he wants, and he gets to make what he wants, and I love that. Um, very few people have that privilege in Hollywood. Uh, Django, that being said, Django Unchained, not my favorite of his. It's towards the bottom for me. Um, still really good, uh, some great performances, but you know, when you got all these other films that we're gonna be talking about, uh, yeah, it's t towards the bottom for me. One that's not towards the bottom, though, Dog Day Afternoon, Al Pacino. This is my favorite Al Pacino movie. Um, and John Cazale, who, gosh, man, did we lose him too early. John Cazale, one of the most underrated actors of all time. Just he, he, every movie he was in, he was in, I think, like five movies, and they were all nominated for Best Picture. I mean, that's, that's crazy. But uh, him and Al Pacino in this, fantastic. Bank robbery movie, if you've never seen it. Uh, based on a true story. Yeah, really good. This actually has, oh, and the reason I, I like this version of the Blu-ray, to get back to talking about certain Blu-rays, uh, this has I Knew It Was You, and it's a uh, John Cazale documentary on here. Fantastic, kind of goes through his, his career, um, and one of the reasons to get this particular version of Dog Day Afternoon. But um, yeah, love, this is the 40th anniversary edition. Absolutely love this film. This might be in my top 10, maybe. Drag Me to Hell, Sam Raimi, man. Ah, oh, this was so good. After he was done doing all the Spider-Man movies, he was like, I'm going back to old Sam Raimi. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And he made Drag Me to Hell, and I love this movie. It's so Sam Raimi, it's perfect. Um, yeah, I, 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 I love watching this one every like Halloween season when, you, when you're doing all your horror movies. Really good, really good. Duel. Uh, Steven Spielberg's first movie, if you didn't know. This was originally a made-for-TV film for ABC, I want to say, and they loved it so much they ended up uh, doing a theatrical release for it in Europe. Um, it's okay. It's not the greatest movie. It's fun to see Spielberg's humble beginnings, uh, but I love this uh, version of the Blu-ray for the special features. There's a great um, interview with Spielberg where he kind of goes through the beginnings of his career, um, specifically focusing on everything he did up, leading up to Duel, all his television stuff, which is really interesting. You don't see that a lot, uh, but, but worth it. I got this for like five bucks, I think, at some thrift store. And uh, yeah, worth it. Very good, Duel. Guilty Pleasure Time, even though they're not really, they're, they're amazing films in their own right. Ernest Goes to Camp and Ernest Goes to Jail. This is a two pack for the ages. Uh, I love the Ernest films, the first four of the like nine that exist. Uh, my favorites, Scared Stupid, which I actually don't own yet. I really got to get, but these two, oh, gosh, so good. I, 
Jim Varney, when I was a kid, was one of the actors. That was the, one of the first. Him and Chris Farley, I think, were the two deaths that like really hit me. Like I was at an age where I kind of understood death, and both of those guys really got me. Um, I so Ernest holds a very special place in my heart. <laughs> love him or hate him, he's kind of one of those love him or hate him type of guys. No one's no one's in the middle on Ernest, uh, but I love him. So got to have some Ernest films. Another Spielberg, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, great film. This one, I wonder if this one, does this have both versions? So Spielberg made a version where he took out all the guns and replaced them with like walkie-talkies and flashlights, and he regrets it. I actually, I prefer the, I want the OG unaltered, that, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in that camp when it comes to, to films. Don't touch the original. It's like, it's an artifact. Don't, don't screw it up. Right? You wouldn't go uh, fix the Mona Lisa, would you? That, that's ridiculous. So stop fixing movies. At least give us the original. Don't try to erase it. I hate that. Uh, I think, but that, this has the, the OG version on it. I can't remember if it has both. Anyway, E.T., great film. Another Sam Raimi, Evil Dead 2. So good. Bruce Campbell, man. He was uh, he was great. This is this is good because this has a lot of this is the 25th anniversary edition. A lot of great special features, a lot of behind the scenes audio commentary. Good, well worth it. Um, wow, I might this is I'm not going to get through all this. I'm going to have to do two videos. Okay, Stanley Kubrick, Eyes Wide Shut, his last film. Uh, I really like it. I like all of Kubrick's films to be honest. Um, yeah, and uh, this one is is no different. Um, it's too bad. I, I, Kubrick died like right after he finished editing this film. It would have been nice to uh, have him live a little bit longer and see how this film was received because it was had a really weird reception. People didn't know what to make of it. He had died, and I think because of that, it, it, it screwed up the release because everyone was like, "Oh, it's Kubrick's last film," so there was like this false reverence for it instead of people appreciating it for what it is. I think over time, people have come to appreciate it. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Great film, as well should. One of the best Disney films of all time, uh, Fantasia. And this is a two-pack with Fantasia 2000. I love Walt Disney's idea for Fantasia. Um, his idea was that they were going to make more of these, you know, take all this classical film or classical music, and that's how they were going to introduce it to these younger generations, add animation over it. And uh, they unfortunately only made one until, you know, 2000 when they made this, the sequel finally, but oh, just brilliant. Wonderful animation. I think this was the third Disney feature animated film uh, after Pinocchio and Snow White. And I mean, what a friggin' ballsy move to make Fantasia for your third film when you're still, you know, growing your your company to put out a film like Fantasia. That took some balls. Uh, so Walt Disney, good on you. Really good. Night on Bald Mountain used to scare the crap out of me when I was a kid. Uh, okay, let's get through, we'll get through the F's in this one, and then we'll pick up the next video with the G's. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Mm, I think my favorite high school film of all time. Uh, based on the real experiences of Cameron Crowe, he went undercover when he was like in his early 20s or maybe late teens, undercover as a high school student, and then he wrote this book, Fast Times at Ridgemont High after that, and then they made it into a movie. Uh, fantastic film, jump-started the careers of how many people? You know, Jennifer Jason Leigh, Phoebe Cates, Sean Penn, Judge Reinhold, Nick Cage is in it for a second. Uh, oh, uh, Anthony, crap, what's his name? Goose from Top Gun, whatever, his name is, he's in there. Love it, love it, love it. And Ray Walston, is that his name? Ray Walston plays Mr. Hand, the, the teacher. Dude, one of the best character actors of all time. Played the devil in Damn Yankees, the 50s version. Mr. Mr. Applegate. Anyway, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Great stuff. The Fighter. I think this is my only David O. Russell film. I love David O. Russell. I think his uh, direction, his writing, superb. And this is not the type of film I would normally be, I would normally gravitate towards. But uh, I just, I can't. I love his use of music. I love David O. Russell. He's just, he's a, a filmmaker's, or he, a film, 
cinema, cinephiles filmmaker. I got there. Uh, great performances. I think Christian Bale won an Oscar for this. Fun film. The Fly. Oh. The be I think the best Jeff Goldblum film, right? Rem this is how you, like, this is up there with the thing on how you remake a film. This is a remake of, like, the 50s Fly. So good. They were knocking it out of the park with these remakes in the 80s, right? Um, really good. Underrated film, Peter Jackson, The Frighteners with Michael J. Fox. I love Michael J. Fox. Uh, yeah, and this, this is great. This is another good Blu-ray for all of the special features. It's got a full-length documentary making of. They're not kidding. That thing's longer than the movie itself. Uh, but this is a really fun movie if you've never seen it. Michael J. Fox can see ghosts. He pretends to be like a kind of a Ghostbuster type guy, but he, he has friends that are ghosts that he has them haunt stuff so he can make, he's like a grifter who can see ghosts for real. Very Peter Jackson-y, very, very out there Peter Jackson-y stuff. Fun film. From Dust Till Dawn. Gosh, this movie is so good. Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez's first collaboration. Tarantino wrote it, Rodriguez directed it, and it's, Fantastic. Early George Clooney. This is this is kind of like his breakout role after ER. He did uh, he did this film. And so had this not been a success, who knows if George Clooney would be the George Clooney we know today. This is one I don't think a lot of people talk about. Very fun. Uh, Frozen. I don't know if fun's the best way to describe it. Uh, it's an Adam Green film. He, he if you're familiar with Hatchet, maybe if you're if you like horror films. Uh, but this is another horror film where th these three kids get stuck on a ski lift. Very simple, uh, very tense, and very dramatic. I grew up somewhere. I went. I, I love skiing. I grew up somewhere where it was very cold winter. So I th these the fear that they prey on in this is exact. I I know. I can totally relate to it. And uh, being stuck on a ski lift. Yeah, I, I've been there when you're when you're on a ski hill and it just shuts down and it stops and you're like, how long are we going to be up here? Um, so yeah, I, it's, I, I would recommend this if you've never seen it. Very fun. Not fun. Not fun. Scary. Effective. Full Metal Jacket. Stanley Kubrick. Arlie Ermey. I mean, come on. Arlie Ermey and, um, what's his nuts? Sugar. Vincent D'Onofrio. Those two make this movie. Now, a lot of people say the first half's better than the second half. Second half is just as good. When they're out of boot camp and they're in Vietnam, just as good. That, that sniper climax ending whoa what a feat in filmmaking and the fact that they shot i think they shot that all in england and they made it look like vietnam that's kubrick for you like he's crazy uh very very good film yeah love it. uh oh and that's it we're, we're gonna end with the f's so i will catch you next time we'll go uh through some more i don't know uh how much more we'll get through but uh thanks for sticking with me on this one blu-rays it's the new thing!